The previous episodes dealt with the present view that writing is to be integrated with other skills. It is further emphasized that writing should serve communication purposes. Written language being a communication device, the interplay of social factors comes to mind. One can think of a question that brings out the importance of the social context of communication, especially that of writing. And the question is, who writes? What, to whom, and where? This means that in communication among humans, language is not the only factor to consider. In fact, without any of these three factors, topic, place, and participants, no communication will ever take place with respect to the communicative testing of writing ability. Let's try to understand the meaning of the question, who writes what and to whom and where? Who, whom, refers to the people who take part in the written communication process. Is it a younger or more junior person writing to an older person or to someone higher in status? Is it a superior writing to a subordinate or to a peer or to his superior? Where refers to a place or setting which could be the home, school, church, leisure place or workplace? What could be a letter? an office memorandum, a news item, or a story. In addition, comprehensible input is necessary, such as the use of authentic text and situations which the learner understands and appreciates because they are within his or her experience. Here now is the classroom scene showing the administration of a communicative test. I'm going to be reading to you directions for a test, but before I do that, I have a question. Do you have a favorite teacher? Yes. Yes, yes you do. Reggie, please tell us about your favorite teacher. Um, I have a favorite teacher. Her name is Miss Chu. Um, she's a very good teacher because um, not only is she funny, but to me, I consider her more than a teacher. She's also my friend. All right. Thank you very much for that. So I'll be reading you the directions. Read with your eyes as I read aloud, okay? I would like you to write a letter to your favorite teacher about a recent personal experience. Okay, can you do that? Okay, you may start. finished your letters I'd like to ask you to read them in class could we have somebody one person muffin please <clears throat> dear miss Martinez greetings ma'am when I last visited you at school you told me that I could write to you as often as I wanted to I would like to tell you about an experience I had last week last Sunday early in the morning I went with my mother to the town market we always go early as my mom did not want to rush cooking lunch we went to the fish section first, then to the meat section, and lastly, to the fruit and vegetable section. We are done at 8 o'clock, and we were about to go home when somebody grabbed our basket. My mother just stood there and could not do anything. Quickly, I ran after the person who grabbed our basket. I must have ran fast, but I caught up him in no time at all. Then came some onlookers. My mother then came and told everybody that the boy was a thief. She explained everything. Upon hearing what my mother said, the people came towards me and congratulated me for my bravery. I felt like a Girl Scout who had just won a medal. I thought you would be proud of me, so I wrote you this letter. Your loving pupil, Muffin. What about scoring? Is scoring a structural test the same as scoring a communicative test? No. A structural writing test, like the one on rhetorical markers, is usually scored objectively. What does objective scoring mean? 
Objective scoring is a type of scoring where the answers are specified in advance, permitting complete agreement among different scorers. Thus, there is only one absolutely correct answer to an item. In direct, structural, discrete point tests are objectively scored. On the other hand, direct, communicative, integrative tests are usually scored subjectively, using holistic, impressionistic, or analytic procedures. In the past, scoring subjectively had meant using three criteria as the basis for judging a written text. These criteria are content, organization, and mechanics. The rater bases his or her judgment on his or her overall impression of the composition. Impressionistic scoring refers to a scoring procedure where two or more single mark based on the total impression of the written text as a whole. Its papers is scored using an agreed scale and an average of the combined marks. In holistic scoring, the markers base their judgments on their impression of the whole written text. Their primary concern is the communicative effectiveness of the text. Analytical marking, on the other hand, refers to a method where each separate criterion in a marking scheme is awarded a separate mark. The final mark is the total of these individual marks. Let's look at the marking scheme which makes use of five criteria, namely content, organization, vocabulary, language use, and mechanics. Each criterion is subdivided into four levels ranging from excellent to very poor. Points have been assigned to its level. Let's take a look at this scale. Note that the criterion with the highest number of points assigned is content with 30 points. This is followed by language use with 25. Organization and vocabulary 20 points each and mechanics the lowest with only 5 points. In marking papers, you may decide to use only several criteria, for example, language use and mechanics, or content and organization. When you use analytical scoring, you just total the points you give to each criterion. You can then transmute the points to ratings. The assigning of the points is not that arbitrary. Descriptors for its level of its criteria are given. You will see this in the TSMs that go with the videotape of this episode. In this episode, we presented to you a typology of language tests, examples of discrete point and communicative writing tests, and the processes in developing writing tests. It was a pleasure to be with you in this episode. Goodbye and happy testing.